<laughs> Happy Halloween. Leave now while you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Come in. Don't be afraid. We're just setting a Halloween stage for you, because today on Short Story Theater, we have a tale called, The Devil, and the First Jack-O-Lantern. You may perhaps be wondering what the devil the devil, has to do with the first jack-o-lantern? Well, there would be no such thing as a lighted pumpkin with a carved out scary face, if it were not for the devil. At least that's the way they tell it in an old Irish folk tale. Here is Gino, Roselli, to begin today's tale, which we hope will put a smile on your face, and a treat, in your tricks. The tradition of cutting faces into pumpkins originated in America, probably around Boston or New York. But the first carving was actually in Ireland, and it was a large turnip, not a pumpkin, that was hollowed out, had a face cut into it, and was supplied with a candle to give it a scary glow. According to the legend a mean disorderly fellow named Jack, who lived in a shack in Dublin, loved to play tricks on unsuspecting people. His foul antics affected everyone, from his own family to the town's upper class. He took great delight in tripping old ladies, suspending wires across pathways to injure human and horse alike, and tying a thread around a gold piece that he tossed on the ground, and then snatching it away from a person who spotted it and went to pick it up. Though a rogue and a no-good, mean Jack, was very skilled in the art of doing bad things, and always managed to escape harm from his foul tricks. Even when he pulled one on the devil himself, by means of his extraordinary cunning, he managed to convince Satan to climb up a full-grown apple tree. When the Lord of Hell was halfway up, Nimble Jack tacked crosses all around the trunk of the tree. I can't get down. I will suffer eternally, if I even so much as brush across one of those terrible crosses on the tree. Take them away. Jack. Please, take the crosses off the tree. Well, listen to me. The devil, you be. I might set you free. If you bargain with me. You have me up a tree, Jack. And I can't get down. Name your price. You scallywag. The price for me, is a soul set free. Mr. Devil one soul is all I ask. For you it is an easy task. You must promise me that when I die. For my soul, you will not cry. Take away those dreaded crosses Jack. And it will be done. For all eternity, I shall never lay claim, to your dark soul. No matter what evil deeds you do. Keeping his end of the bargain, Jack removed the crosses. The devil climbed down the apple tree, and went to hell. For his part Jack went to the pub, in order to celebrate his big victory over the Lord of Darkness. We shall skip the details. Suffice it to say, about 20 years later, after a life of deceit, and drunken debauchery, Jack died. He applied for a small apartment with a balcony in heaven. At the pearly gates, St. Pete took one look at the old reprobate, and said, Not a chance. No way, Jose. Jack, there's no place for the likes of you in heaven. Go to hell. So Jack did. He took the express elevator to the very gates of Hades. He knocked on the massive metal doors that led into the inferno. Slowly a door opened. And Jack saw, and heard, the horrors of what lies beyond. What the hell do you want, Jack? What are you doing here? I'd like a little spot in hell. Even a little closet would be swell. I won't take up much space. Just give me a little place. We made a bargain, Jack. I promised that I would never claim your soul. No matter what. I'm keeping my end of the deal. Hit the road, Jack. Devil. You win. It's on the eternal road I will be. I am doomed to remain stuck forever, in the dark netherworld, between heaven and hell. And it is so dark out there that I can't even see where I'm wandering. I'll do one thing for you, Jack. Here, catch this. It is a flaming ember from the furnace of hell. This burning ember will glow forever, and guide you on your endless walk. 
between the gates of heaven and hell. Jack had a turnip with him, a plentiful and favored food in Ireland at the time. It was a large turnip and Jack felt that it would make a good holder for his flaming ember which was too hot to hold in his hand. Jack hollowed out the turnip and cut holes in the side. When he placed the ember inside, the light from it shined through the holes and lit the way for him in his perpetual walk. The last thing new souls arriving at the gates of heaven and hell saw before they were admitted to one place or the other was a mean-spirited man carrying a brightly lit jack-o'-lantern. Happy Halloween. Leave now while you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. And so it was that during the first great waves of immigration, the people of Ireland brought the tradition of turnip carving to America. Though once they got here and discovered pumpkins, they stopped using turnips because pumpkins are bigger and easier to carve. And so closes another episode of Bill Russo's short story theater. The Devil at the First Halloween Jack-O-Lantern was adapted by Bill Russo especially for our little theater company. This is your host, Basil Nightingale, asking you for a favor. Like us on Facebook and share our stories. There are thousands of podcasts out there. And the best way for people to find us is by likes and shares. Please keep us in mind, and tune in again real soon. Won't you?